How you doing? Welcome back to the Furl Bridge Berry Patch. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is messing with our tractor again. So we're going to be attaching the snowblower here, the 66 inch snowblower on the, on the, uh, on the Coyote CK2610. Uh, but to do that, what we have to do first is remove the loader from the, uh, from the summertime and the piranha tooth bar. So let's get started. Okay, so before we can attach our snowblower, we have to take off the uh, the bucket. And to do that, I like taking off the Prana tooth bar just so it sits level to the ground because this tooth bar does sit a good uh, three, I'd say five eighths of an inch uh, below what the, what the bucket's supposed to. Um, so I don't want it to sit at an angle. I would much rather have it sit flat for the whole winter. Um, first thing we're gonna do is gonna take off the Prana tooth bar. And to do that, what we use is two uh, closed end wrenches, 15 sixteenths, loosen it up, go this way with it. And once we get loosened up, just use a drill, one side, hold it on the other, and off she comes. Two washers, one lock washer, and one nut. And we'll put this back on the tooth bar uh, once we get it off the tractor, just so we don't lose it for next spring. Thanks, Toby. Appreciate the help, buddy. We'll do the same thing over here. Uh, two closed end wrenches, 15 16 Loosen them up. Ready, tight, lefty, loosey. Once we get loosened up a little bit, hold on one side. Use the drill on the other. And off she comes. Bolt, two washers, lock nut, put them together so we don't lose it. Now we take the prong tooth bar off. like that. A little dirty. That's okay. Not going to hurt anything. We'll set it aside for the winter. So the next thing we need to do is take the bucket off the tractor. Um, so we're going to lay this bucket flat. I should wash that out so it doesn't rust it out. I'll clean it out later. So we're going to lay the bucket flat and then we'll remove the, uh, the loader. Okay, so to remove the loader on the, the Coyote CK2610, it's pretty simple. There are these feet here. Uh, we lay those flat to the ground, and then we remove these guys, a couple pins, and then you back up. It's pretty simple. Oh, I see it. Oh, this is going to be easy. So to remove, to lower these, all you do is simply lift up on the foot. It's on a spring. It comes down. I'm actually going to have to lift the loader up a little bit to get it in that next notch there uh, so it doesn't drop down an inch. So I would bet they use the same arm for multiple, uh, mul multiple loaders. It's just a standard piece. So there's multiple um, notches for this arm to go in. For this tractor, it's a third one up. One, two, three. All right, so once we have the feet down on the loader arms and uh, the, the loader is flat as it can be to the ground, what you do is release the pressure on the loader and on the, on the uh, lines by kind of wiggling this around, releasing the pressure. And uh, what we do is we just remove these guys here. You push down, you push down, and you lift up, you push down, lift up, there. So now what we have to do now is remove these pins. This is kind of, this is actually usually the tough part, removing these pins. Um, oh, they're moving. 
If you greased up well enough, I guess it's not that hard. So what we'll do is we just pull this right out. We'll pull it out part way. I'm gonna go around and do the other one. Before I pull that one out, I don't want it to go crooked, and then I got a whole new set of problems. That came out pretty easy. Pull it out halfway, just like the other one. Hopefully she doesn't drop that much. Nope, didn't drop at all. Now, the reason I leave this in the garage all winter is simple. The garage is flat. Uh, if, if this was on uneven ground, it'd be damn near impossible to put this loader back on in the, in the springtime. But I don't wanna mess with that. So we leave it in the, uh, on the level ground. So now that I removed the, the arms, from the tractor, uh, I'm gonna I relieve the pressure on the hydraulic lines, and now what I'm gonna do is just re remove the hydraulic lines from here, and then I can back the tractor up, and we're good to go. So before we start attaching the snow blower to the uh, tractor, what I like doing is I like greasing everything down because I'll be honest with you, it's a heck of a lot easier to grease things when we are not attached to the tractor. So I'm gonna throw some grease in here. Take over. That way everything slides easier, everything moves better. There's a U-joint on either end of this uh, with a grease fitting. So we'll stick this on there. You can hear that air popping through. That means we were missing some grease in a couple spots. There. I've got greasable bearings on this shaft here. Couple more U joints, one here, one back here. And on the blower itself, there's also a few more grease points. Uh, we got a grease point right here. The box comes over, and there's a shaft here that rotates the chain right here. So we got a grease fitting right here for this shaft. Give it a couple good squirts. So there's grease fitting on this side of the shaft. There's also grease fitting on this side of the shaft. Grease fittings up here for the chute. Over there. there. There's also grease fittings on either side of the auger and those bearings. So like I've said before, the subframe is kept onto the tractor by two very large pins. One pin goes here and one pin goes over there. Uh, what I, in the front of the tractor, that portion there. What I like doing is just like take a little grease, put it into the hole that the pin goes in. That way it slides through a little easier. Um, I also put grease around each pin. Here's what the pins look like. It's just a large hunk of metal with a bar. Uh, welded onto the end to grab to, and then just a pin on the other end. 
So we're gonna grease these up. This shorter one here is shorter, but it is a bigger diameter. That's what she said. <laughs> um, so that one goes in the front. So we're just gonna put a co quick coat of grease on around it. So the next step is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive the tractor forward and uh, I'm going to get the, uh, the shaft here connected to one end and then there's a mid-mount TTO in there. I'll show you that in a minute and we'll get that other end put in. So what I tried to do was drive the tractor as close as I could so the, uh, the two holes line up. And the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the back. So I'm gonna jack up the back a little bit and uh, get those pins in place. It never goes that easy. Beginner's luck. Nice and even. Get the other pin. Okay, I'm gonna connect the hoses now. Um, I took a photo of the one I had last year. So red goes on red. Yellow does not go on yellow. Yellow goes on green. White goes on to white. Blue goes on to yellow. Okay, so what that did was it locked the pins up here and locked to put the pin in the slider here. So then what we do is take this guy, put it into this pin, which is part of the frame, and put it on top of this pin, which is part of the auger. And you just pin it in. So you take this pin, slide it in here in the frame of the, of the snowblower. Slide that over the pin of the auger. Take this pin, put it through here, snap it shut, and they're locked together. So here's my mid-mount PTO. So what we do is we take this shaft, we slide it onto the frame of the tractor. further than it needs to go. This side of the mid bound. Right. 
So that's the mid-mount PTO. Goes along the shaft to this U-joint, which is by a couple bearings. Another bearing there, which goes to the front where the auger is. So I think the last thing we need to do is hook up the hydraulic lines for the snowshoe. That goes right and left. Again, just slide it in. If you ever run into a point where the hydraulic has, has pressure in it um, and you can't get the hoses in, all you have to do is go back to the controls of the, of the loader and just kind of wiggle it around a little bit while the tractor is off and it relieves the pressure. So it'll just slide right in. There. I just got my snowblower attached. I went out to start my snowblower, hit my mid-mount PTO start, and nothing, nothing. And I'm thinking, what did I do wrong? I have a linkage here that's not attached. I don't know how it got disconnected, um, but that links to there, which is obviously going up to my uh, mid-mount PTO controller. And that goes into this guy here. Uh, looks to be just a pin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that back in here, get ourselves a washer and a pin, and we'll get it fixed and we'll get it started. Thanks for watching. Uh, I only have one thing left to do. I got to switch around the uh, the two hydraulic hoses on the chute because they're definitely going the wrong way. I, if, I feel that if I sh bring my loader controller to the left, it should turn to the left and right now it's going to the right. So I got to switch those two hoses around, but besides that, so that's that. So if anybody has any thoughts, questions, or concerns, um, if you have any uh, requested videos that you want to know about the tractor, or if you want me to go show you anything specific on this, let me know. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. This again, this is Scott with Furrow Bridge Berry Patch, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.